What is going on guys? In this video, we are going to create our own chatbot application with Jetpack Compose. This will be a complete bot application. You can ask anything and it will respond. As you can see, this is the homepage of our application. Here we have ask me anything. You can write the message over here like this. Hello, how are you? It's typing and I have got the response. You can ask anything. Also, it will understand the history. You can ask for any code. Let's say Kotlin code. You can also copy the code directly from here. So it will be a complete bot application. We'll use Gemini SDK provided by Google. So let's start building this awesome application with new Android Studio project. Select new project, select empty activity that is Jetpack Compose activity, click on next. Let's give the application name EasyBot. Minimum SDK let it be 8.0 and build configuration language let it be the recommended one. Click on finish. So till our project loads, let's understand the architecture. So here I'll give EasyBot. We'll be using Kotlin as a language and we'll use Jetpack Compose for the UI. So first thing we will create the UI, let's add a phone. So first thing we will achieve is here I will create just a title bar. Let's say it will be our app name that will be EasyBot. So here will be our app name and below here at the bottom what we will do. I will add one text field. So there will be one text field. Let's say ask anything. So this is the text field and we will add a button over here. So that will be send button send. So here first we'll achieve this UI. So whenever we type something over here and we click on send button, we'll call the method in the view model. So here we'll add a view, view model and whenever we click on send button, it will call the method of the view model. So we will create a method in view model that will be send message and it will take a question as a string. So whatever we type here, the send button will send the question to this method. So here it will be question. So one task is done. We have created the question and we have sent it to the view model. Now from view model, we have to call the API. So what API? So we have Gemini API we are using. So this API we have to call. So how we can call this API? We can call it through different methods. Let's say we have retrofit or you can use volley or ok http. So with the help of this, you can call from view model and from this we will call the Gemini API. So this thing we can do. So this code we have to implement. We have to handle everything. We have to create the instance. We have to write the code to get the API, but Google provides SDK for the Android. So we don't have to implement everything. So what will happen? We will eliminate this and we will add a Gemini library. So here, let's say we have library code. We don't have to worry about anything over here. We have to just call the method of library code. So once we implement the library, what it will do, it will call the Gemini API and it will get the response from Gemini API. So this thing, this library code will do automatically. We don't have to worry about it. Only thing is from view model, we'll call the method of the library code that will be, we'll send question and we'll get the response from library code. That is the response. Then we have to show the response in the UI. We'll create a model class which will be message model let's say and it will have some values that is first thing is message which will be a string. Second thing will be role. So if you see we can use this message model as question as well. We can use this message model as response as well. So whenever we ask the question role will be user. So whenever we get the response role will be model. So in this way we will use the message model. So if we ask the question from the user it will be user. If we got the response from the Gemini API it will be model. So how we can display over the UI. Let's say I have sent hello to the Gemini. I have sent this message. So here it will be in the message it will be hello and role will be user. So this is one message model. Now we'll get the response. So it will move up and whatever the response we'll get we'll show it over here as hi there let's say it has responded like this now this message model will be message will be hi there role will be model again we can send something so how we will handle this this will store in a list so we'll create a list which will be the list of message model let's say message list and what it will contain is it will contain all the messages so first let's say user said hello then we got the reply from the model hi there then let's say we have asked something again my name is easy and model replied Hello easy. So in this way conversation will go. So whenever we'll ask the question, we'll add it in a message list. And whenever we get the response, again we'll add it in a message list. So this message list now we can show in the UI like this here. So hello we can show over here. My name is something like that. So in this way we can show in the UI. So this will be our architecture. One more thing is every time we are sending a question. Let's say I have sent hello. It will send hi there. Then again we are sending a new question. 
that is my name is easy hello easy so if i send again let's say what is my name the model will not understand because every time we are only sending the last question in the question we will send only what is my name so api doesn't know what you have chatted it with if you ask again it will say i don't know so that means if you ask follow up question gemini api will not know the history so how we can solve that so instead of sending question only every time what we will do we will send question as well as we will send the history so what is the history let's say if we are starting the chat we will just send hello then second time if we are sending this message we will send this old message as a history again if you are sending this message this all message will be sent as history and this message will be sent as question if you understand it will check the history and it will respond to the new question so it will work like that so we'll implement like that every time we'll send question as well as history and we'll get the response so this will be the complete architecture it will be easy to create now from here so let's get back to the code so our project is loaded let's run and see either it is created correctly or not so we can see hello world that means it is created correctly so let's say hello to this hello world and delete this greeting composables also delete this greeting from here first we'll create new kotlin class for the composable let's say chat page it will be a file and here we'll create composable that will be chat page let's say and we'll call it from main activity chat page we can pass modifier as modifier dot padding inner padding here we can write let's say text chat page if i run it you can see chat page we have to add padding so now we will design first we will design this header so for that what we will do i will add column and i will add modifier as whatever we have received modifier and here i will add header first so for that i will create a composable let's say app header we don't require modifier here i will create a box so here let's give modifier modifier dot fill max width and i will give some background color as material theme dot let's say primary color so color scheme dot primary now inside this i'll just give a text that will be our app name let's say easy bot let's add modifier as well so modifier dot padding around 16 dp let's import this dp let's add it in multi line and let's give color as color dot white font size let it be 22.sp import this sv as well now let's add this app header over here app header if i run now you can see our app header is working we can minimize this now let's create another composable so that we can add this text field and this send button over here so for that here i will create another composable that will be composable let's say message input so we'll call this as message input we don't require modifier let's remove this for now and here we'll design so let's add a row for this text field and the send icon let's add a row over here row we'll give modifier modifier dot padding around 8 dp and vertical alignment will be alignment dot center vertically so here we'll add outline text field first thing we need value and on value change so for that we have to create a variable so variable message let's say by remember mutable state of empty string so first we'll give empty string let's import this get value and set value here in the value we can pass message and in on value change we can pass let's make it multi line and in on value change we can do message equals to it whatever we type below this text field we can create icon button so on click of this icon button we will do something and we'll add icon as icons dot default dot you can see over here we have lots of icon let's select this send and content description let's say send put it in a separate line now we have text field and the icon button if i run now we need to add this message input in the column so message input let's run you can see over here we have the text field and we have send button if you type a long message over here send button is moving out of the screen so for that what we will do in the text field we'll add modifier first modifier dot weight one weight as one floating point so that it will give the space to icon button and remaining space it will take if i apply changes now if i type long message also it won't go so we have this send icon so whenever we click on this something we have to do so what we will do here we will take a parameter on message send which will take a string and which won't return anything so unit so this on message send function so whenever we click on icon button this on message send will be called 
and we'll pass message. So it will call this function on message sent, whatever we do over here, and it will clear out the message. So message should be clear out. So we will set it to empty string. Now here in the message input, we have to pass the parameter that is on message sent function. So on message sent will be something we can do over here. Now if I run, if I type something and click on send button, it will call this method and the text is cleared. That means it is working. Now this is done. We'll create a view model and send this message as a question. So we'll create a new Kotlin class that will be chat view model. Let's say it will be class which will extend from view model here. As I have said, we'll create a method that will be send message, which will have a question as a string. So here it will be function send message, which will take a question as a string. So whenever you click and send button, it should call this view model method. So how we can implement that? First, we have to create the instance of view model in main activity. So here value chat view model equals to from view model provider pass owner as this get the value for chat view model class dot Java. So it will create the view model instance and provide to us. So let's pass this in chat page as a second parameter. Here we'll take view model as chat view model. Now we got the view model from main activity. We can call from here whenever we click on send button on message sent will be called and we will send view model dot send message and question will be it in this way view model will get the question if you see log over here log dot i let's say in chat view model question now if i run and let's open the log cat here let's search for in chat view model and type something here let's say hello test you can see it has come over here in chat view model that is hello text. So whatever you type, it will come over here. Now we should implement view model will send it to library code. So what library we have to implement? So from here we have to send the question to Gemini API. Google has provided us the library. So you can go to Gemini SDK for Android. You can click on this link. And if you go over here below, you need one API key that we will create in some time. First we'll add the dependency. So here we have to add this dependency that is Google AI client generative AI. So let's copy this dependency from here. Go to build at cradle that is app label and paste it in the dependencies. Click on sync now it will download the dependency. So it has downloaded now we can use this. Let's close this. Now here we have to use this. So how we can use you can read the documentation over here. If you go down over here, build multi turn conversation, we have to create the instance and then we can start the chat, we can send the message. So we need this. So here, first we'll create the instance. So let's say value generative model, which will be of type generative model equals to generative model. So here we have to pass something. So if you see we have two mandatory arguments that is a string string. Those are model name and API key. If you see in the documentation here, model name and the API key. So model name will copy this Gemini Pro paste it over here and API key will be. So how we can get the API key. So what you will do, you can go over here, you can see get an API key or you can directly search Gemini API key. You can see get an API key over here. You can click on this and then click on get API key. So you need to log in with your Google account. So once you log in, you can check this out and you can click on create API key. So here you can see, so create a API new project. You can click on this. It will generate. So it has generated. We have to keep it secure. So you can copy this now, go back to the project and you can directly paste it over here. Instead of that, what we can do, we'll create a constant class. Let's say constants. Let's make it object. And here we can write value API key equals to paste that. Now here constants dot API key. We have created the instance. Now we can use those methods. So here, since it will take some time to load the data from the API, we have to use it in coroutine. So view model scope dot launch. So it will be asynchronous. So here what we will do. So if you see the documentation, first we have to create the chat and then with that chat, we can send message. So here, Let's say chat equals to generative model dot start chat. For now, we will not add history. As I have mentioned to you earlier, we can send question plus history. For now, only we will send the question. So for testing, what we will do? Let's call chat dot send message and the question will be our question and we will get some response from here. So let's add it in response and just log this response. So let's see so we get the response from the API or not. So response from Gemini, let's say and we will print this response dot 
text dot to string. Let's run the application and test. I will open logcat. I will do response from Gemini. Now let's type a message and send. Let's say hello. Let's wait for some time. So you can see hello there. How can I help you today? That means it is working. If I say what is Android, let's wait for the message. So you can see we have got the message. We have got the long message about Android. That means our API is working. Now what we can do, we can implement this message model. We can add it in a list and we can show it in the UI. So we'll do that. So we have got the message in response.txt.to string. Now let's create this message model. So here new Kotlin class file, it will be data class message model. And here we will have two things that is message that will be of type string. And second thing is I have told you earlier role which will be string. That's it. We require two things only. So whenever we send the message here, we'll create a message model and add it in a message list. So whenever we send the message, it will be one message model. Whenever we got the response, it will be another message model. In this way, it will work. So here first thing, I will create a list value message list by lazy and it will be a mutable state list of state list of message model type. So we can add in this list now before sending any message, what we will do add it in message list message list dot add will add one new message model so message model will create with two variable that is message and string so what will be the message message will be question what will be the role role will be user because we have sent the message so first we have added hello to this list so here we have added that hello to the list as user has sent the message after getting the response what we can do we can do the same thing copy paste it after getting the message we can add response dot text dot to string as a message for whatever we have printed over here and it will be model role will be model whenever we send the message we have added to the message list whenever we got the message we have added to the message list now we can remove this log now we have the message list this message list we can show in the ui so how we can do that so here so let's create another composable let's minimize this as well and we'll create another composable that will be message list message list it will take modifier as well as message list so it will be list of message model and we'll call this from the column in between of this app header and message input we'll do message list and message list will pass from view model dot message list so we'll get from here this is the message list we want to show in this ui so in the list what we can do lazy column we have already implemented this and here we can pass items as our message list we can pass here now composable so let's for now just add a text which will be it dot message that's it it will create a list of text now let's run and see we are getting the message in the list or not so let's send hello you can see hello is added so the bot message is also added what is android message is added so model message is also added so ui is not good because it is going at down what we can do here in the message list, we will be passed modifier equals to modifier dot weight. So one floating point and this modifier we have to use in lazy column. So modifier equals to modifier. Now if I apply change. So now let's say hello. You can see we have got the reply. Hi again. But the message you can see over here. It is at top. It should start from here. So let's do that reverse layout as true in this lazy column. If we apply changes, then it will come below over here, but the messages are reversed. So first message should come over here and the last message should come over here. Here also in message list, we'll make it reversed. Now if I apply changes, now it is good. What is Android? Let's say message is added in the list and you can see the reply. Now we'll design this in such a way. This hello should come at right hand side. This message should come at left hand side according to the rule. If it is user, will set on right if it is model will set on left so let's do that so for that what i will do instead of this text composable i'll create a new composable that will be message row let's say let's remove this modifier now here we will take message model so message model message model and from here we'll call message row and message model will be it now here we have to write the logic for left and right so for that we have the role so I will create a boolean first. Let's say is model equals to message model dot if role equals to model. That means if the role is model, then we will make it true. Otherwise it will be false with this boolean variable. We can write logic. So let's design the so first I will add a row 
and I will give vertical alignment alignment dot center vertically and inside this row I can add a text so text will be message model dot message so what we will do for this text first thing we'll add a font weight font weight dot w500 let's say now what I will do I'll wrap it with a box so that I can make alignment left and right in this row I will add box inside this box I will add this text and for this box I will do modifier modifier dot fill max width so this will take entire width apply change if I restart now you can see font width we'll put this in separate line first now we'll add some effect to this text but we'll not directly apply to this text what I will do I'll again wrap this with a another box and put it text over there and here I will add modifier so modifier modifier dot first thing is alignment so what I will do if is model that means if the message is sent by model then alignment will be bottom start that means at left side else alignment will be bottom end so it will go at end after this alignment padding will be so for the message sent by model I will give padding at end for the message sent by user I will give padding at start so for that I will do start if is model padding start will be only 8 dp else it will be 70 dp that means the message is sent by model will give some small padding over here and at the end it will be 70 dp same for end it will be opposite so if it is model then 70 dp else it will be 8 dp give comma over here now if I run hello there so you can see our message is on right and model message is on left let's add padding to top and bottom as well so top will be around 8 dp bottom also let's say 8 dp now let's add background to this so I'll say background let's say color dot red for now apply change you can see it is red text color make it as white also we'll add padding after adding background so around 16 dp now it is looking like this let's clip this before adding background and give the shape rounded corner shape around 48 floating point so you can see it is rounded corner now you can give different color according to the role let's add color in color.kt file let's add some manual color I'll copy this paste it and call it as color user message duplicate this color model message let's say you can select any color from here but I will give manual for now I have the color code so 03 a 9 f4 for the user and for the model 4c a f50 now we can use this color in the ui so here what i will do if is model then it will be color model message else it will be color user message so we'll take color from color.kt if i run now hello you can see we have different color now now it is done that means our chat is working but as I have mentioned right now we are only sending the question not the history if I say hi my name is Tony it will say hi Tony if I again ask what is my name it won't understand because we are not sending the history so let's send the history and see how we can do that so here whenever we are starting the chat here we can pass the history if you see history and it will take the list of content that means it will take the list of messages so here we can do history so how we will create the list of content from this message list we have the list of message model what we can do message model dot map will map each message to a content so content so if you see content what it will take it takes a role and the content builder so role will be from message model that will be it dot role and it will take a builder where text will be it dot message so we are creating the content object from the message model and we will convert it to list so to list we have converted to list now it will understand if you run now let's say hi my name is Tony we got the reply what is my name you can see your name is Tony that means now it is understanding the history as well so it is working so if you ask anything what about you again you say tell me my name one thing what we can do whenever we are sending the message let's say it will take some time if you do what is android till the time the message load we can show the typing so for that what we can do whenever we are sending the message immediately in the message list we'll add message model that will say typing and it will be sent by model let's say because we want it on left side so this is the fake we are adding fake message that is typing so once we get the response we have to remove that as well so message list dot remove last so we can do that and you can add typing 
three dot over here if i run now let's say hello you can see typing so if you write what is android it will show typing till we get the message and the typing will be replaced with the message so this is working now one thing what we will do we might get some error if there is no internet or something like that we will handle that over here so here what we can do we can do try catch inside try i will cut this out and paste it and in catch we'll do exception same thing we will do first thing we will remove the typing message and then what we will do we will add message model and what will be the message let's say error and we'll concat it with whatever we receive as a message and role will be model so here one bracket in this way when we get the error it will show the error if we got the response it will show the response if i run and turn off the internet for now let's say hello you can see typing and you can see the error so in this way it will work now it is working we have handled everything if you restart now one thing you can notice we can send the empty message as well so this we have not handled let's go to chat page and whenever we are sending the message in the message input here what we will do on click of the message if message dot is not empty if it is not empty then only we will do something like this if i run now now we can't send empty message one last thing what we will do we'll add one icon over here and one text so whenever we come to this screen it is empty then we will show that icon and the text so for that i will use drawable so let's go to resource new vector asset click on clip art and search for here question answer let's say let's take this one next and finish now where we will use we will use in this message list if message list dot is empty so if it is empty we will show something else we will show something so in else we will show this lazy column in if what we will do we will show column and inside that column we will add icon which will take painter to paint resource r dot drawable dot whatever we have added question answer and also we need content description icon let's say for now now below this we'll add text which will say ask me anything and font size let's say 22 dot sp if i apply change so here there should be no comma if i apply change restart so it has come over here for column we'll give modifier equals to whatever we have got this modifier modify dot fill max size horizontal alignment alignment dot center horizontally vertical arrangement arrangement dot center now it is in center for this icon you can add tint purple at for now and let's increase the size as well so modify dot size 60 dp if i restart now nothing. so this will be visible when we have nothing if we have some message it will be gone and it will display the message so everything is working so everything is working write a code for hello world here you can see if you want to copy the text you can't do it because we have used text composable we can't copy directly so to copy anything from the composable what we have to do so we have to wrap this text with selection container so let's wrap it with selection container now this text will be selectable if i run now I write a code for kotlin hello world now you can see i can copy this so i can copy any text i can copy this text as well so this will work so in this way we have successfully created our bot application using gemini sdk so if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button if you have any doubts and queries please comment below i will reply for you don't forget to hit the subscribe button before going see you in the next video Bye bye